τι χαιρέσαι Τη καινούργια σου αγάπη Ένα τι Και να με κερνάς φαρμάκι Να τι Όμως μακριά από μένα Γιατί αγάπη μου Στα έχω ξανά υπομένα Αν πότε σε δω Αγκαλιά με εκείνη κάπου Θα πω τρελαμώ Και τα πιο μέχρι θανάτου Κι αν πότε σε δω Αγκαλιά με εκείνη κάπου Θα πω τρελαθώ Και τα πιο μέχρι θανάτου Λοιπόν να τη χαιρέσαι Την καινούργια σου αγάπη να τη χαιρέσαι και να με κερανάς φαρμακή Let's get ready to rumble Να τη χαιρέσαι την καινούργια σου αγάπη Ένα τη και να με κερανάς So why is Allah saying to him the following ayah? Stay away, ya Muhammad, from idols. You're supposed to be a follower of Jesus, and you're using words like that. Well, it's, it's not my words. I, 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 it's not my words. It's the words of Allah. Are you embarrassed of Allah? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment that you all have been waiting for. For, 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 for. It's time! You're listening to the live broadcast of your friendly neighbor, Stream Doctor, and Christian Polemicist. Polemicist, Polemicist, Polemicist. The warrior for Christ and enemy of Allah and his messenger. Messenger, 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 messenger. This is your favorite YouTuber. Now, speaking from Cave, Hira, 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 Hira. Rob Christian, 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 Christian. Please fasten your seatbelts. We are back, baby. We are live, baby. Let's go. Welcome, everybody. God bless you. Nice to see you. Man, I'm hyped up. Are you ready, guys? Because I'm ready, baby. I am born ready. And we are here to stay. Welcome, everybody. God bless you. All jokes aside. Yeah, Rob, Christian, take it easy with your intros, man. What's wrong with you, Rob? Hey guys, sorry, man. I'm trying to be funny. Uh, I'm not always funny, but I'm trying at least, okay? You know, if you read all of these... Um, 18 plus uh, topics in Islam, you know, to <clears throat> not throw up or vomit or get disgusted. You need to see the fun of it in, in it, and, and and you know, else you have to take a bath uh, every couple of minutes because of all the filth that we can find in the Islamic books. So I'm trying, okay, guys, I'm I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to go through all the filth that I must share with you and show you how evil and how disgusting and 
how sexually oriented Islam is. It's all, all about sex, guys. The whole religion of Islam is all about sex. Sex, sex. That's it. So please keep away the children. Welcome, everybody. Yes, we are live. You heard it correctly. We are speaking from Cave. Hira, Hira. Live, live, live. All right. The topic, the topic of today is Aisha. Our lady of the hour, our special baby bride of Rasulullah, Aisha, the mother of the breastfeeders. The mother of what, Rob? The mother of the breastfeeders. Emotional damage. Yeah, baby, yeah. Emotionally damaged. If, if I was a, I would be a Sunni Muslim, guys. I'll be really emotionally damaged. And always, you know, we, we even see the Shia making fun of the Sunnis of how disgusting Aisha was. This Aisha destroyed actually the Sunnah of Muhammad. She is actually helping us exposing what kind of sexual, carnal religion specifically Sunni Islam is because the Shia, they curse uh, uh, Aisha, right? They hate her. They hate her more than you and me, guys. They hate Aisha with a passion because Aisha said many awful things about Rasulullah being under the black magic spell of Satan for six months. Uh, uh, Muhammad used to hold his penis better than all the rest of the men. I mean, Aisha had some serious, serious experience because how could she then have said, Rasulullah, my husband, the prophet of Islam can hold his penis better than all of you. Well, she had uh, a lot of experience with other men because she was always, you know, doing it with other men, right? So she had experience and she told them in front of the Sahaba, nobody can hold his penis than Rasulullah. Not, not, not when, when one of you, not any one of you. Because how does she know? Because she saw a lot of penises, guys. I'm not kidding. Right? And we're going to prove it. So, <laughs> sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry that I chose this topic of today. I can't help myself. Emotional damage. Guys, try to invite as many people as you can. And um, many people st still don't realize that you can uh, subscribe to my Patreon account for free to get a notification through mail whenever I upload a new video or I'm a, before I go live. I'm about to go live. I always share on Patreon that I will go live. So you can, you know, Patreon, this is very important. Patreon recently, if I'm not mistaken, gave us the opportunity to subscribe for free. So you don't always need to support the ministry, my ministry, with money. So you can literally subscribe there on patreon.com. You, you can create an account for free and you can see whenever we post something, we share that we're going to go live. So make sure to go uh, to my description box under this video and immediately subscribe to my Patreon account. My Patreon account, guys, for free. You can subscribe for free and you'll get a notification because, because Sharia Tube, YouTube, doesn't send out often a notification to people and notifying people that Rob Christian is going to destroy Islam life on air again, right? So do that, guys. All right. Before we start this 18-plus topic about the mother of the breastfeeders, Aisha herself, I always need to start with a prayer so we can be guided. Uh, we are Christians. We need prayers. Without Jesus, we are nothing. So let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, three persons, one God. Bismal Ab wal Ibn wal Ruh al Qudus ilahun wahid, one God. Amin. And in the Aramaic, we say, Pshemabu wabro, Uruhu Kadisho, Had Allahu Shariro. Amin. Amin. We pray. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to do another live stream together with this wonderful audience my beloved audience and subscribers our team of admins the names in the blue yes lord bless this live stream i beg you to bless the internet connection and everybody 
who is here, listening and watch them. Bless them, keep everybody safe. We know the consequences of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We know the consequences, we know the risk when we speak against Islam, but we are ready. Whatever happens to us, we are ready. We are not scared to speak about the truth. Yes, Lord, but keep our families, our loved ones, and children safe. Bless them and protect them, Father. Lord Jesus Christ, yes, Lord, I pray to you, I beg you and ask you to cleanse all of us with your holy blood and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Please shine your holy light on all of us, O Lord Christ, including the Muslims who we have hope for, these truth-seeking Muslims out there, we have hope for these kind of Muslims who might be in need and are seeking for the truth. And I know that many Muslims, yes, Lord, I know that many Muslims do watch my videos and live streams. But Lord, I ask you, I beg you to open their eyes because we do not hate any Muslim. We have hope for many Muslims because they are our brothers. They are still our brothers and sisters in humanity. How can we not love our brothers and sisters in humanity? You told us to love everyone, even the ones who persecute us or want us to die. Please, Lord Christ, Jesus Christ, yes, Lord, draw these Muslims to your feet so they might know you, the real you. Everything for your glory, O Son of God. Your name above all names. O holy, living God, you are the Father's heart. You are the love of the Spirit. Christ, I beg you, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Bless my throat and loosen my tongue today on this very live stream. And guide me so I can speak the truth. Nothing but the truth, O Lord, without any error or any shame. Because I'm not ashamed about the truth. And you claim to be the truth, the way, the truth, and life. So how can, be a, how can I be ashamed by exposing the truth? Lord, give us wisdom and courage to do, to do whatever needs to be done. In your holy name, O Jesus Christ, your name above all names, we pray. Amen. Amen. Speaking from Cave, Hira, 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 we are live, 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 live. We are back, baby. We are right here, baby. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. I'm hyped, man. Rob. So oh, easy, man. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. Emotional damage. It's too much, Rob. I know. I know. Forgive me, guys. Pray for my shortcomings. <laughs> I'm. I'm. I'm a sinner. I'm. A, I'm a work in progress. Okay. Pray for my shortcomings. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys. All jokes aside. I'm a, I am a man in, uh, I'm a man in, uh, you know, I'm a work in progress. I have, I have issues like anybody here. We have issues. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Focus Rob. <laughs> yeah. It's too much fun. Sorry. Guys. Anyway, uh, I want to say hello to our admins first, my dear beloved admins, my team, my uh, dear brothers and sisters who are working hard. Sister Inda, how are you, sister? Amen. Amen to that prayer. Thank you. Uh, RJ, nice to see you, brother. How are you? How are you, guys? I hope everybody is doing great. Uh, EMB Maxim in the house. What's up, buddy? Sister Dragon Deniers, my dear, my dear sister Dragon Deniers, how are you? I hope you're doing fine. Our dear sister Dragon Deniers, I cannot thank her enough. She's always working on the timestamps. She's doing a lot of work in the background. A dear, dear sister, God bless her. Pray, pray for her, guys. Pray for her loved ones. Sister Juliette Abraham, nice to see you, dear sister. God bless you. How are you? Brother St. Louis, what's up, buddy? What's up? What's up? Yo, yo, yo. Hey, guys. Welcome. OT Genesis. Hey, buddy. David, what's up, bro? I hope you're doing great. Uh, I'm not sure if there are more admins. I saw Phil Herrera somewhere. He's hiding somewhere in the chat. Not sure where he is. 
Oh, there he is. Get a waterproof PC and watch in the showers. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't give us spoilers, Phil. I'm going to block you, bro. <laughs> Phil. Uh, I was born late, but I'm ready. Born ready, baby. <laughs> and uh, again, uh, of course, our uh, regular subscribers, audience, all of you, uh, new subscribers, new visitors to this uh, ministry, small but humble ministry. Uh, nice to see you, Sheikh Boy Boy. Sorry, I cannot speak your name. Sorry, forgive me. Nasi, how are you, Nasi? Go ring. How are you, brother? Nice to see you. Uh, Jai, what's up? Many people, Feritas, a regular. How are you, buddy? Uh, I can't mention all of your names, guys, but to all of you, all of you, including the Muslims who we love, we do not hate, welcome, God bless you. Try to invite guys, share the link on social media that is in pinned in the comments. Share the link on social media. Let everybody know that Rob Christian is live. Please, I need your help. And like I said in the beginning, make sure to subscribe to Patreon for free. You can literally subscribe for free um, so that you will get notified because YouTube won't send notifications out because I'm always, always shadow banned. So people complain. Now you don't need to complain anymore. You can literally do something about it. Subscribe for free on Patreon and you will receive a message through mail that Rob Christian will go live. Okay? Do it. I recommend you to do it. All right. All right, all right, guys. Let me do something here. Uh, let me set up uh, the system, the phone lines. Let me open the phone lines here. Give me a sec here. Uh, just a second. Only Muslims, of course, as you know, guys. Only Muslims can call. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rob Christian... Let's see if this is going to work. Let's see if this is going to work. <coughs> All right. Uh. All right. Uh. Copy link. Okay, let me put it in the live chat as well and pin it up. Muslims can only call guys, as you know. You know the main rules. Muslims at Muslims call life. Call us life. Call us life. Okay. Sorry for that, guys. Forgive me. Only Muslims and only Muslims can call. All right. If you're a Muslim, call us live on air. The phone lines are open. Okay. The phone lines are open. All right, all right. All right, all right. I think everything, yeah. We are ready. Let's go, baby. All right. As said, guys, today's topic, Aisha, the mother of the breastfeeders, the mother of the believers. I love to call her the mother of the breastfeeders because she was always breastfeeding the adult young boys, the young boys who just recently became adults, so, she's the main person for today's live stream. And you're going to see how she became literally damaged goods. Muhammad damaged her. He not only physically damaged her. I don't, I don't believe that her womb survived, guys. Because remember when Muhammad uh, consummated the marriage with her. Consummated. Very expensive word for effing her. At the age of nine, he damaged her private part. He damaged her insides. So she became damaged goods, Ayusha. And that's why she became a very, very baddie. A baddie. Ayusha became a bad, bad girl. Oh, yeah. The bad girl. Ayusha, the lady of the hour. Bad girl. Oh, yeah. Bad girl. Emotional damage. She became a bad girl because of Muhammad, what he did to her. He destroyed her mentally and physically. Who? Aisha Rob? Yes, of course. And you will 
have to conclude, like myself, you have to conclude that she became damaged goods. Okay? Keep inviting uh, people, guys. Keep inviting. Let's reach at least 200 people. Like always, guys. Come on. Keep sharing the link. Let everybody know that Rob Christian is live. All right. Aisha, and I challenge any Muslim to debate me about this topic. Prove me wrong. If you are more men than your mother, Aisha, the mother of the breastfeeders, then call us live on air. The link is in the pinned up comment. You can call us. All right. Aisha Diary Farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aisha became like a milk cow. Got milk? Got milk? Call Aisha. Call Aisha. Call Aisha. Okay. If you need milk, call Aisha. All right. In Islam, guys, if you want to take a screenshot, go ahead. In Islam, a mahram is a very important uh, word. A mahram in Islam is, let's say, a family member with whom marriage would have been considered permanently unlawful. So uh, if you become a mahram, let's say Aisha would have breastfed you, you she will basically become your mother and you were then not allowed to lust, sexually have lust for Ayusha anymore. So if she breastfeeds you, for example, uh, if let's say maybe she's your mother, your sister, your daughter, officially in Islam, <laughs> you should not be sexually, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> for her. That's what basically a mahram is. Someone who is unlawful. A daddy, a brother, right? A mahram. A woman then automatically does not need to cover up, does not need to wear hijab around her mahram or spouse. Husband is also a mahram. Oh, sorry, a spouse is not a mahram, sorry. Spouse is the husband. Of course, he's not her mahram because he can sleep with her, okay? All right. So, guys, uh, so a woman, you cannot enter upon a woman again. You... Cannot enter upon a woman in Islam if you are not her husband or mahram. All right, someone who is not allowed to sleep with such a woman because he's then her son, maybe her son, her, her daddy, her uncle, whatever, right? Any male relative, let's say of someone or someone that that woman has breastfed, you know, milk from her breast went inside her, his, his uh, uh, throat. <laughs> so let's say one day, uh, let's say Ali Dawa, Ali Dawa who happens to be married, if one day Muhammad Hijabs, Muhammad Hijab, Mujab would have visited uh, uh, Ali Dawa, who is a married man, uh, the wife of Ali Dawa must put a nipple inside the mouth of Muhammad Hijab on five different days. Remember, it used to be ten days. On five different days, he must she must suckle him before he can enter, you know, for him to become the mahram of the wife of Ali Dawa. No, no, it's free, Jake. Everything is for free. For free. Five suckling on five different occasions, five different days. Okay? So, regarding Aisha, guys, regarding Aisha, uh, we know that she was accused, she was being accused by the Sahaba. One woman, one woman, and three different men, one woman, and three different men accused her, they accused her, of sleeping with a guy called Safwan. A guy called Safwan. Right? And what happened was, guys, these men and women accused Aisha when she came back from, uh, you know, when after Muhammad, uh, first Muhammad and the Sahaba came back, and we're talking about uh, after the invasion of Benil Mustaliq. After Muhammad invaded the Banu Mustaliq, the tribe called Banu Mustaliq, Aisha then 
was accused of staying behind with Safwan, one of the Sahaba called Safwan, sleeping with her behind the back of Rasulullah, committing adultery with Safwan in the process. Muhammad, when he heard about it, he did not punish these people who accused Aisha. Instead, he sent her to Abu Bakr. Aisha, Aisha was sent by Muhammad to her father Abu Bakr to stay there for one long month. <laughs> Why, Rob, one long month? Because they, Muhammad wanted to make sure that she wasn't pregnant. Muhammad's logic is, <laughs> if Aisha would have been pregnant, then she for sure would have had adultery, fornication behind his back. Muhammad doesn't realize that a woman doesn't always automatically become pregnant, right? If she, if you sleep with a man, it, you won't always get pregnant, Ya Rasulullah. But of course, Muhammad wasn't that smart. Remember, he was illiterate, right? Nice thinking, exactly, Jai. So Muhammad's logic was, if I send her to Abu Bakr for one long month, I send her to her parents' house to make sure that she's not pregnant. So she stayed there for a month. And Muhammad, after finding out she wasn't pregnant, Aisha wasn't pregnant from Safwan, how convenient, like always, Allah wakes up from his uh, sleeping chambers, you know, from his very long winter sleep. I, uh, Allah wakes up and he sends Jibreel with an ayah, you need to get four male witnesses, else you cannot accuse someone of adultery. It's in the Quran, right guys? You need four male witnesses. Since only one woman, listen carefully, one woman is you need two women. You need two women. Again, two women makes one man, right? In Islam. Since there was only one woman and three men who accused Aisha, that means you didn't have solid proof enough for Aisha to be accused of adultery. So Allah sends down through Jibreel the ayah to make Aisha innocent, right? So Aisha became innocent. Of course, after Muhammad sending her for a long month. <laughs> so yeah, this is this is funny stuff, you know. Funny stuff. And even the Aisha, the the Shia guys, the Shia still accuse Aisha of uh, you know destroying the reputation of Rasulullah by fornicating. Even the uh, Shia do believe like I myself, we do believe, including the Shia, Shia Muslims, they do believe that Aisha committed adultery with Safwan. Right? And even Abu Bakr, guys, Abu Bakr said, you have destroyed me, ya Aisha. You destroyed my reputation. You humiliated me and you have destroyed the reputation of Rasulullah. Even Abu Bakr believed that his daughter, Abu Bakr, guys, is the first caliph, right? Abu Bakr, the father of Aisha, he believed that his daughter was not innocent. He believed that she literally committed adultery. And I mean, a father knows his daughter, right, guys? A true father knows his daughter. Right. So, guys, what happens next is, what happens next is, yeah, you see, guys, this hadith, but what happens next is, Aisha then uh, claimed after the death of Muhammad, uh, she claimed after the death of Muhammad that a goat came in and ate the ayahs of adult breastfeeding and uh, stoning an adulterer. Why? Because Aisha feared the Sahaba. She believed, I think she believed, that if Muhammad would have died after the death of Rasulullah, the Sahaba would have continued accusing her of sleeping, uh, of, of committing adultery, and they would have stoned her to death, right? So she made sure to get rid of the, specifically the ayah of stoning an adulterer, right? And she also said, she Aisha claimed that Safwan, to save her reputation, she claimed that Safwan, who she slept with, he was a hasura, which means basically... Her secret lover, Safwan, her secret lover, Safwan, had a small penis. 
First question is, how did Aisha know? How, question, question. How did Aisha know that Safwan, Safwan had a small penis? How did she know? How did she know? That's a very important question. How did she know? How did Aisha know that Safwan had a small penis? Because that's what she claimed. What this automatically means, guys, if he has a small penis, he could she could not have slept with him, right? But how did she know that he had a small penis? Well, clearly she checked out. She checked his penis out. She knew. <laughs> uh, right? You have to see it with your eyes to know that he has a small penis. Right? So she claimed that he has a small penis. In other words, if he has a small penis, he could not have produced semen to, you know, to <coughs> do it to her, give it to her. And we can find this information in Siyar Alam al by a Dhabi, Imam al Dhabi, and uh, Sira al Nabawiya, and many, many other books. But the wife, here comes the problem. The wife of Safwan, the actual wife of Safwan, said that Safwan was a very, very horny man. Safwan was a very sexually active man. That's what the wife of Safwan said. Safwan, she said Safwan was a very, 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 very hot man. He was hot, baby. He was very, you know, Safwan was, he was always after the women. So we have a contradiction. Aisha contradicting herself, lying about Safwan. The guy could not stop effing women, man. So, yeah. And we know from other sources, also in Sahih Muslim, that Aisha was always being visited uh, by many men. Look. Look. Abdullah bin Shihab al-Khawlani, who had his own personal house, his own personal residence in Medina. He was from Medina, from the Ansar. And he said, look what he said. Abdullah bin Shihab al-Khawlani reported, I stayed in the house of Aisha, and he had a, even a wet dream in the house of Aisha. So Aisha's house, guys, became literally a cheap, cheap uh, motel for the Sahaba to come and sleep in the house of Aisha. And remember, the house of Aisha was very tiny, tiny, very tiny house, right? Very little, tiny house. Have you seen my last video, guys? You could hardly move in that house. I showed a small picture. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. About the red velvet, guys. Have you seen my video about the Muhammad stealing the red velvet? Come on, don't say I didn't see it. Muhammad stealing the Qatifa, the red Qatifa, the red velvet. You seen it? Muhammad stealing the red Qatifa, brother. This is the house of Aisha, guys. If you, uh, you know, look how small it is. So here we have supposedly the graves of Rasulullah, if I'm not mistaken. Also, Omar and uh, Omar and Abu Bakr are also buried. Look, this is the house of Aisha on the left. Look how small it is. Tiny, very tiny. So if someone would have slept, he would have slept here or here. And if he had a wet dream, literally Aisha was literally beside him. Do you see, guys, on the photo, on the picture? This is where Aisha slept, and someone who was sleeping in the house of Aisha, and had, he had uh, wet dreams. Now ask yourself, who was the guy having wet dreams about? Of course, about Aisha. And Lord knows, Allahu A'lam, Muslims say, Allah knows best what they did more in the night. Very tiny little house. You guys. So here we have a separated part here. A, a wall, a tiny wall, and we have the graves of Rasulullah, the graves of Rasulullah, Omar, and if I'm not mistaken, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, Abu Bakr. And this is this tiny part on the left, this is the house of Aisha. So Aisha was literally beside the graves, right? Very tiny. What is it? Two meters, maximum of two meters by four, maximum. That's how small her bedroom was, right? There you are. So my question is, why is someone sleeping in the house of Aisha, who is a stranger literally, 
And he, he has his own house in Medina. He's from Medina, guys. Why is he sleeping then in the house of Aisha, who happens also to be in Medina? And why is he having wet dreams? And about who is he having wet dreams? Very important question, right? Emotional, damn it. Right, guys? Any Muslim who would dare to call us live on air? Call us. Yalla. Defend the honor of your mother Aisha. The, defend the honor of your Rasulullah. Defend the wife of Rasulullah, ya Muslimun. Ya Akhwan. Ya Ukhta, where are you? Yalla, ya Akhwan. Very important questions, of course, Jai. Right? Because remember, if Aisha was a very, very baddie, she was a baddie, right? A bad baddie. That means we have a problem. Why? Because Aisha, guys. Aisha gave us almost the health of Islam. Almost half of the sunnah comes from Aisha. Did you know that? Half of the teaching and tradition of Rasulullah, of Muhammad, come from Aisha. She's a scholar. She is the one behind all of these hadith. Right? Uh, any Muslim? Since Aisha was a bad woman, would you take your Islam from her? Since Aisha became a very bad woman. Basically, the, you know, the car of the town, you know, everybody can use this car or this motorcycle you can literally jump on on, on her back and uh, you know drive away she literally was the <laughs> what do you call someone like that you know whenever he needs a dingy dingy you want to have some sexually uh, you know some some sexy time go to Aisha she's going to breastfeed you you can have wet dreams in her cheap motel I mean her house the village bike, yes, that's the word that I wanna that I was looking for. She became literally the village bike. Everybody could use her. Bad to the bone. <laughs> dingy dingy. I mean you get the idea, right, guys? And guys, like I said, in Islam, Muhammad said, look at this beautiful hadith. Let me give you this link as well. If let's say you come home. You, are, you have worked 16 hours, right? You are trying to provide food on the table for your family. You come home and you see your wife. Look, someone, a Muslim, uh, a Sahabi is asking, Ya Rasulallah, Ya Rasulallah, Oh la la, Ya Rasulallah. If I come home and I find a man banging my wife, Ya Rasulallah, I find my, uh, my wife getting violated Ravished by another man in my own house, on my bed. Should I leave them there until I had brought four witnesses from outside? So guys, if Muhammad was a man of honor, he would say, kick him out or, or put at least a fist in his mouth and divorce your wife. But no, Rasulullah said, Allah said, yes, go outside he allow the man, that strange man, to continue banging your wife. Make sure to go outside. Let them finish. Go outside and get four witnesses. Four male witnesses, guys. Notice there must be four male witnesses to see the action. The action. You know, the French baguette, right? Going inside the honey pot of the wife. The French baguette of the strange man going inside the honey pot of your wife. What if that uh, man, uh, you know, is like uh, <laughs> a black man with the, with a uh, penis size of a, of a donkey, you know? Maybe he has a huge thing and he's going to destroy your wife's insides. Let him finish. Go get four witnesses. By the time you come back, the guy already flee away. He, he, he maybe jumped out of the window. You can't, you can't catch him, right? Muhammad said, go get four witnesses. Let the man finish your wife. 
Let them have some fun. By the time you get four witnesses from outside, the man is already gone. <laughs> and your wife is fully satisfied, baby. Your wife is fully satisfied. At least allow your wife to satisfy from another man. Right? This is the sunnah of Rasulullah, guys. It's in front of you. Again, the link. And also, of course, guys, this is in the Quran. Right? In the Quran as well. This is the beauty of Islam. This is the beauty of Rasulullah. Guys. Let your wife be ravished. Make sure to go outside and get four eyewitnesses. And these eyewitnesses must be at least three men and two women. Because two women make one man. So you have you need four male witnesses or three male witnesses and two different women. Right? On top of that, guys, even though Sahaba knew that Aisha was a baddie, she was a baddie. Look. Look, guys, so not only did the Sahaba have wet dreams inside the house of Aisha, sleeping, of course, with her, having sex with her, but uh, here is more. Look what they used to say to her. Look, in Sahih Muslim 2488a, let me give you this link as well. Sahih Muslim, collect all of these links, guys, and use them in your debates. Look what it says here. I visited Aisha when Hassan was sitting, Hassin was sitting there and reciting verses from his com compilation so guys a man someone visited Aisha Masruq reports that he visited Aisha in her house and he saw another man sitting in her house and reciting verses from his own mushaf let's say for the Quran she was chaste and prudent brother Aisha was chaste and prudent uh, blah 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 a lot of blah 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 but look what he says to her look here is very long hadith I don't want to read the entire hadith for you guys. I'm not in a mood to, write, to read newspapers. But look what he says. I said to her, so this man said to her, why do you, Aisha, permit this man to visit you? You are, you should be, you know, a good woman. So guys, even the Sahaba understood, hey, you are the mother of the believers. You are the wife of Rasulullah. He loves you dearly. Why is this man in your house, oh, Aisha? Oh, Aisha enjoyed she enjoyed sitting with men in her house. Right, brothers and sisters? Aisha loved the company of men. Aisha's house was a cheap motel. Look how small it is. Look how small this her house was. Right, Ayusha. Yeah, Ayusha. Is your house a cheap motel? Yes, brother. She, it is. Aisha was the bike of the village. Right, guys? Aisha was the used bike of the village. And I challenge any Muslim to say, Rob, you're lying. Motel number eight. Okay, should we give her, uh, you know, her house a nickname? Motel number eight, yeah. Any Muslim who dares to call in and say, Rob, you're lying? Yeah, yeah, of course, Tony. I said it. No, I said it. I said you have to see. No, you're not listening, Tony. <laughs> Tony, do you need me? Should I, should I ban you, bro? <laughs> You know, I love you, right? I said you have to see the French baguette of the of the man. The French baguette, you know, the, 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 the bread, the long bread of, you know, that the French love to eat. You have to see with your own eyes as a witness. Four witnesses must see the French baguette of the man who is ravishing your wife going inside the honey pot of your wife. So go get outside, bring four witnesses, and they must see happen. But... What happens if you bring the four witnesses and your wife is already done and finished? Tony, don't force me to come and crucify you. Okay? Now God bless you, brother. Guys, please focus. So Aisha was a bad girl, Rob, of course. Aisha was a bad, bad, bad. Baddie. She was a baddie. Aisha was a bad girl. What is what can you show us more? Yeah, of course. Of course. Your wish is my command. If we go to Fath al-Bari. Guys, do you have any idea what Fath al-Bari uh, means? What is Fath al-Bari, guys? Anybody knows? Fath al-Bari by Ibn Hajar. You know what that is, guys? You know what kind of book this is? What is Fath al-Bari by Ibn Hajar, guys? Anybody knows? If, let's see if people have been at paying attention to my uh, many live streams. Admins, you can say, uh, give the answer as well. What is Fath al-Bari, guys? Anybody? What is Fath al-Bari? Any admin? Any, any? 
Yes, Sars, but you can't remember EMB Maxim. Come on, man. Don't you guys always take notes? Fatih El Bari, guys. There you go. Juliet Abraham knows. Thank you, Juliet. Juliet Abraham, you're a very, very knowledgeable person. God bless you, sister. May the Lord uh, make your knowledge bigger and greater. And I hope, guys, if it's one, one day the Lord takes us back, that we left enough videos, laugh shows, and knowledge behind so that people can take over and do continue bringing down the hammer on this fake carnal sexual cult of Isl called Islam. So it's the commentary to specifically, it's Fatih al-Bari in front of us, is the commentary, multi-volume commentary on Sahih al-Bukhari. So this book is the book of commentary, commentary for Sahih Bukhari. And it's a very renowned work by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. The number one explanation, the exegesis for Sahih al-Bukhari. Are you paying attention, guys? Take notes, please, because this book is very important. Okay? Very, very important book. So in Fatih al-Bari by Ibn Hajar, volume 1, page 620, 620, we find that adult men who used to come and enter in the house of Aisha, she, as we called her, the village bike. Look, this is Aisha, guys. Do you see her? This is Minnie Mouse. I mean, Aisha. She's taking a bath. And the adult men enjoying the naked body. Uh, the adult men enjoying the naked body of Aisha. Rob, can you prove it? Yes, I'm, I, here's the, I mean, the source is on the screen. Right, guys? The source is on the screen. Guys, if you want to uh, support the ministry, you can literally use PayPal. You can donate through PayPal or through Patreon. You can, guys, only if you want and you can, okay, please. Okay, don't feel forced, please, guys. We're not uh, asking for money, God forbid. I don't need money. But if you want to support the ministry for us to improve our uh, equipment, because all the money goes to the equipment, improving uh, uh our, our equipment to give better live streaming and video experience because it's so now and then we need to replace the computer, replace my hardware, my microphone, everything, right? And it's not cheap. So guys, uh, let me prove from the books. Oh, we have, a, we have someone. We have a Muslim? Hello? Hello. Hello? Yes? Are you there? Yes, I can hear you. So, so what are you discussing? What are, what is your? You have a very bad connection, brother. Can you do something about your connection, or maybe your microphone? Okay, you can hear me. You can hear me now. No, this is no, this is bad, bro. No, not going to happen. Come with a better connection or better microphone. You have very static noise, and it's already destroying my ear. So make sure to. Call in with a better connection. Yeah, I think it was a Muslim. If I'm not mistaken, Quran alone, only Muslim. But So it's, you're not going to help much. But anyway, um, look guys, in Fatih al-Bari, for the explanation of this Sahih al-Bukhari hadith, you see, Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 251. What does it say, Rob? It says the following. Narrated Abu Salama, Aisha's brother and I, so Abu Salama himself and Aisha's brother, Brother through suckling, by the way. I went to Aisha and asked her about the bath of Rasulullah. What, what bath? We call that Ghuslu Janaba. Janaba. Which means uh, washing washing uh, uh, your private part from semen. Right? Private part after releasing semen. Releasing semen. Right? After the dinghy dinghy, guys. Ghuslu Janaba. Of course, they are not going to tell you in the translation. You need to go to the Arabic to understand what's going on. Like always, they will always mistranslate. But what can you expect from these cowardice Muslims? So in this hadith, guys, it's talking about Ghusli Janaba. Right? They call it the washing, the bath of Rasulullah. What, what, what is this kind of description, man? Anyway, so washing your private part after you maybe masturbated, whatever, you, you put your uh, wee-wee inside the mimi, of the wife, of the woman, right? So they, you know, Aisha was a was an expert on it. 
Aisha was uh, a madam. She was the madam. She was the expert on washing your private parts. <laughs> Aisha was the expert to go to. Imagine, guys, whenever you need some expertise, you want some knowledge on how to wash your penis, go to Aisha. And of course, they were all men. All of them were men. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Aisha. Uh, this Aisha, man. I mean, this Aisha, man. Emotional <laughs> damage. <laughs> so go to Aisha. She will tell you how to do it. So she, Aisha, brought a pot continuing water and took a bath in front of them and put it over her head, and at the time there was a screen behind her and us. If we go to the explanation, guys, in Fath al-Bari, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, for this very specific hadith, Sahih al-Bukhari, right? This hadith here, let me give you the link. So we need the explanation to understand what's going on. Qadi Ayyad in Fath al-Bari by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani says, it is apparent that they could see Aisha's actions, actions meaning the washing, from her head and the top half of her body. In other words, guys, her breasts, Aisha's breasts, were fully exposed. So they saw her breasts fully, fully, you know, the, the, you know the, in full glory. They saw Aisha's breasts in full glory. Did you catch it, guys? Take notes. So the men who came to ask her, she used to use her expertise, and in front of them, she was taking a bath, washing the, uh, her upper body, right? Exposing her hair and breasts. Can you show us the Arabic? Of course. Look, guys. Here is the Fath al-Bari, the book. I don't need websites. In Fath al-Bari, volume one, a jiz al-awwal, Al-Mujallad al-Awwal by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Look, Fath al-Bari in the Arabic on top. Bisharh Sahih al-Bukhari for the explanation, the exegesis for Sahih al-Bukhari. Okay, this is the book. Page, page 620. Look here in the Arabic on the right upper part of the page. 620, 620, page 620, 620, okay. Here's the hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari on top. And the explanation always in the bottom. Talking about Aisha, right? And here we find what I showed you in the translation. That Qadi Ayat said that when she is doing the action, meaning the washing, they saw her action from her head, washing her head and her naked upper body. In other words, you could see literally from the belly button and up. So you could not see her uh, female private part. She had, uh, you know, that part was covered, but you could see the breasts of Aisha exposed. The Sahaba, the young man, enjoyed the show. The Sahaba and the young man, they enjoyed the tabi'een, they enjoyed the show. And they were always going back to learn how to wash their body from Aisha. She was explaining the sunnah, the teaching and the tradition by washing her naked body in front of them. Uh -huh. Emotional damage. I mean, I mean, all of you now, I'm sure all of you are going to become Muslims now. Right? I am sure that all of you will become Muslims now. Right? I am sure that all of you are going to convert to Islam. Too bad Aisha is not around anymore because I myself would have been interested to go, you know, because you need to realize, guys, there are, there are always, every day, there were rows in front of the house of Aisha, men after men going inside to learn from Aisha how to do ghusl janaba, to, know, to understand how to wash your body after dingy dingy. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Audhu billah. <laughs> Did you catch it? You see it? There you go. All right. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, volume 1, page 61. The explanation for Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 251. All right, all right, all right. 
Now that we move that out of the way, guys, let us go back to the suckling, the breastfeeding of the mother of the breastfeeders who used to take out her breast. We just proved it. Aisha was always exposing her breasts. She was the motorbike of the village. Everybody could use her. Her house was a cheap model, motel. Look, very tiny little house. Men came in, other went out. Men came in, other went out. Men came inside her house and they went out. They used to have wet dreams in her house. They went go out. She used to take ba bath in front of them, exposing her titties in front of the boys and they went out. New men came in. It was like a literally a, a, a factory. Breastfeeding, washing, exposing the titties of Aisha. Uh, uh, huh. Emotional damage. In and out, in and out, in and out. On top of her, uh, on, underneath her, in and out, in and out, outside, in and out, go inside, brother. Cheap motel. The motor bike of the village, Aisha, the mother of the breastfeeders herself. Okay? Okay. Now, I had a debate. Guys, I had a debate with a Muslim about this topic. The challenge was Rob Christian. I gave him a challenge. I gave that Muslim a challenge. He's a Sunni Muslim. And I said to him, if I can prove to you that Aisha became the, breast, the mother of the breastfeeders, she was breastfeeding the young men of Medina, if I can prove it to you, will you leave Islam? He said, yes. But of course, Muslims are not. Uh, men of their words because they will throw everything under the bus if you show them from the books but guys enjoy the following debate that happened earlier watch here's what happened guys we had a debate with a Sunni Muslim on TikTok and the question was did Aisha breastfeed the young men and the challenge was what will you do as a Muslim if we can prove to you that Aisha truly did breastfeed the men? Here is what happened. Let's go. First, I will start with uh, the Quran and I will go down and down, more down. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so, hold on, hold on, one second, Rob, one second. Yeah. I want you to say it again. You will leave Islam right now. You will condemn your prophet. Okay? And you will accept Jesus as, a, as your Lord and Savior. Absolutely. So guys, so focus, notice, we gave the challenge. One of the uh, admins, the, the, the other guy who was talking was a Christian, Brother Kapora. Uh, he's a friend on TikTok. He, he, he is asking him again. If we can prove it, if we can prove that Aisha was breastfeeding adult young boys, you're going to leave Islam and become a Christian? He said, absolutely, right? Again, focus, guys, focus. You will condemn your prophet, okay? And you will accept Jesus as, a, as your Lord and Savior. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. You will say Muhammad was a pedo. You will say Muhammad um, is a pedo. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yellow. Sure, he right. said sure, right, guys? Everybody heard this, right? Yeah. Hang on, he, he's already said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he yeah, said sure. 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 <laughs> I want to know if everybody's recording. <clears throat> record, everybody, record. I am, I'm recording. He's already yeah. started. Yeah, 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 here we go. Are you ready, uh, uh, Palestini? His name is yeah. Palestini, right? The Muslim. What is your is name, Palestine. by the way? What can I call you? Amir. Amir is his name. Uh, you see, if I'm sure. going to show you, there's no way out, huh? Because we are recorded now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, Habibi sure. Tama. Uh, I'm talking to a man. I'm not talking to a to a boy. So a man keeps his word, right? Keep our word. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hello. This is Quran Tafsir for the Quran Tafsir al Tahrir wa Tanwir. Tafsir for the Quran, at tahrir wa tanwir li Ibn Ashur, the giant Maliki scholar, Juz al rabi Okay, for the non-Arabic speakers, Tafsir for the Quran, at tahrir wa tanwir So this is for Quran, okay? Ibn Ashur, Maliki scholar, volume four. Tamam? Aywa, okay. Page 297. 
9.7. Okay? Look. Surat Anissa 4.23. Surat Anissa 4.23. Guys, you seen my finger, right? This is the finger that keeps destroying for the last 20 years. This is the uh, finger al-Akbar of Rob Kushin that has been destroying Islam left and right, right? This finger is very dangerous. Surat Anissa. Do you see it? Everything is on the screen. وكانت عائشة وكانت عائشة أم المؤمنين إذا أرادت أن يدخل عليها أحد الحجاب أرضعته بارا بام بام يلا كدم يوم كدم يوم محمد ناو يلا يلا سيد محمد زبيب أوكي أوكي بو أوكي بو said that what was said before that this is Quran Read it. You want to read the entire page? Again, the translation. If Aisha, the mother of the believers, wanted a man. Guys, in the chat, Mr. Negus, I'm going to ban you. Negus Afrodandol, I'm going to ban you talking about different topics. I'll give you, you see, I don't like to mute anybody. But if you disrespect the live stream, you are forcing me. I will give you five minutes, mute. Anybody who disrespects the live stream, you'll get a mute. I will mute you for five minutes because you are not focusing. Let this be a warning. Five minutes, then you can chat again. Okay? Don't disrespect and talk about outside topics. Focus. Man, shame, shameful, shameful people, man. Again, the translation, if Aisha, the mother of the believers, wanted a man to enter upon her, she did what? He signed it. That's yeah. one. That's one. Just a second. This is reference number one. I okay, have this, another one. Does this say Rajal? Just a second, Habibi. If this is not enough, look. Just a second. Listen, listen. Dalik min who? Dalik min? This is by the permission of the Prophet. So your Prophet Muhammad used to order Aisha to do. This is that's, by that's the permission of Rasulullah. Okay. That's now here is reference number two. Reference number two. Let me make it more worse for you. Look. So this is Ayusha. Got milk. Okay. This is Aisha. Here is reference number two. Fath al Munam, Sharh Sahih Muslim. This is Sahih Muslim. Fath al Munam, Sharh Sahih Muslim. Volume five, Ajiz al Khamis. For the non Arabic speakers among us, Fath al Munam, Sharh Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim, explanation by Musa Shaheen Lashin, volume five. Page. Six two two six hundred twenty two. We go down for the Arabic. So this is book number two, guys. Page six two two. Look, wa kanat Aisha, wa kanat Aisha, رضي الله عنها ترى أن أرضاع الكبير يحرمه وأرضعت غلاما فعلا وأرضعت غلاما فعلا عائشة indeed. Fa'alan indeed did suckle a young man. Yalla, go ahead. This is this is this is Quran. Yes, this is Sahih Quran. Muslim. We showed you Quran and Sahih Muslim. Yalla, Yalla. do what you okay, gotta well, do. Well, no, well, repeat after me. Repeat after no, me. No, 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 shut up. Well, well, repeat well, after me. Yalla, yalla, be a man. Be a man. Oh, what was the context? <laughs> I need to know the context. Brother, repeat after me. I need to know the context. Brother, what, what context? is the context? Okay, but what was before that? What, what, what happened what, before what, that? You know what's the well, problem? You know what happened before that? She took out her breasts and she became the milk cow of the town. Aisha became the mother of the breastfeeders. Right? She was the milk cow of the town in Medina. Okay? That's the context. But this guy, like any Muslim, any typical Muslim, they are not man enough to keep their words. He said he was going to denounce Islam and become a Christian. But he's a liar, like all the Muslims. Bunch of liars. 
They have no they have no manhood in them. A real man stays by his word. He said in the beginning, he is recorded and we were recording all of the all of us were recording by the way that day on TikTok because this happened on TikTok. We said to him, if we can show you, if we can prove from your books that Aisha suckled young men, you have to leave Islam. He said, yes, absolutely. That's what he said. Absolutely. Of course, he's lying. Well, here, what's the problem? Here's, the big, here's the bigger problem than what Rob showed you. Aisha, she never, where are you? Come back. <laughs> hey. You see, Rob, guys, this is why we always say there are no real men left in Islam. This guy is not a man. Rob, Rob, one second. He said he wiped me. He wiped the floor with me, right? Yeah. Watch. Hey, come back, come back. Text your your buddies. Them boxing they're gonna help you. Come back. Okay, I'm here, bro. What are you doing? Okay. He's gone again. Come back. <laughs> okay, but the the big problem here. Oh. Bro, this guy is is breathing. Give him. He's breathing. Bro, he's about to. Bro, make, we're gonna make it look like a joke, man. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Rob, 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 yeah. go to Sahih Muslim. Go to Sahih Muslim. Okay, listen. Oh, hush, 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 hush. I'm gonna you wipe. Not hush, hush, hush. He, he showed you Quran, Rob. Sahih and Muslim. and Sahih Muslim. Okay, fourteen fifty-three eight. Go to fifty-three eight. Oh, okay. For, 14, okay, but that could have been that could have been so Hush, 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 hush. Okay, give me the verse again. Uh, hush, right I'm gonna wipe. I'm gonna wipe Allah with you. Hush. Guys, do you see when we have Arabic speakers, Arabic speaking Christians? We are not like your typical Western guy here in the West. The humbleness towards Muslims and Islam. You need to give Muslims the hard truth. Sometimes you need to be harsh with them. You need to be not soft with these Muslims because being humble as a Christian does not work. You need them. You need to put them in their place and destroy them, shake them in their in their in their boots, else they are going never to be uh, planting a seed. It does not work to be a humble with a Muslim. Stop using apologetics. Use polemics. Go on offense mode. Whatever they say. Whatever a Muslim says, use it against him. He said, prove it. But we said to him, if we can prove it, you're going to leave Islam? He said, yes, absolutely. But of course, guys, we just proved to everybody that Muslim men are not real Muslim men. They are not men. They are, they are, they are cowards. They are puthis. Puthis, right? You have to not be political correct. Stop. My dear brothers and sisters in Christianity, you know I love you, right? You are my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. But when are you going to grow a spine specifically here? I'm talking to my brothers and sisters here in the West towards Islam, the filth of Muhammad that they call Islam, this filthy perv prophet and his man-made cult, sex cult, and with these Muslims. You have to be aggressive, guys. Being humble does not work. Okay, Learn. Learn how to debate Muslims and learn also how to not debate Muslims. We already gave you, bro. We already since, gave since you more you than enough. You're not worried. Hold on, Rob, 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 one second. Since you talk big about my name, read it for him, Rob, read it for him. Yeah. Bab Ridat al Kabir, not Sahir Habibi. Okay, Sahir Muslim, Habibi. Look. Sahir Muslim 1453. Aisha. Aisha. Uh, same Aisha. Reported that Sahla bin Suhail came to Allah's apostle. So Muhammad, look, Messenger of Allah, I see on the face of Abu Hudayfa. So who is talking? Who is talking? Sahla. Okay, Sahla is talking. Okay, the wife of Abu Hudayfa. Messenger of Allah, so she's talking to Muhammad. I see on the face of Abu Hudayfa, his her husband, signs of disgust. On entering a grown-up man by the name of Salem. He has a beard. He was a grown-up with a beard. Look, who is an ally into our house. So uh, her husband, Abu Hudayfa, is, you know, he's envious. He's not, he doesn't like it that another man comes up. Whereupon Allah's apostle said, Yeah, suckle him. So he was a grown-up, suckle him. Now look what her reaction. She said, who? Sahla. She said, how can I suckle him, Ya Rasulullah, as he is a grown-up man? 
Like Aisha used to do it, as we showed you earlier. Allah's messenger smiled. Look at this disgusting uh, pervert prophet. Your, pro your prophet is a pervert, bro. Look, Allah's messenger smiled <laughs> and said, I already know that he's a young man. So instead of saying, I understand you, it's I know, you don't want to do it. No, he said, I know. Amr made, made his addition in his narration that the president, blah, 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 okay. So, so look, Allah's messenger left. What kind of this? What a filthy prophet, right guys? He is forcing women in the seventh century, married women, to take out their breasts and suckle adult men with beards. And you Muslims call this man a prophet of God, let alone the final prophet or the best example to follow for mankind in 2024. You are disgusting like your prophet Muslims. Muhammad is laughing. He's having fun. He literally ordered women to take out their breasts and suckle grown-up men with beards. What is this religion, man? What is this filthy, perverted prophet, man? This is a perv. This cannot be a prophet of God, man. Shame on you Muslims. Disgusting a prophet you follow, bro. Okay, but look at your priests from today and how disgusting. Guys, <laughs> instead of saying, instead of accepting that Muhammad is a perv, he's shifting the goalposts and attacking these disgusting priests who lay their fingers on young boys. Uh, hello, we Christians condemn everybody, any man, priest or no priest, who lays his fingers on a young boy or a young girl. But you support Muhammad, you believe that he's a prophet of God, so by trying to justify the filth of Muhammad, they attack priests. You idiots, man. Defend the honor of your prophet. What, what they have priests to do? Priests don't claim to be prophets of God. That's who they are. Yeah, okay. You're, you're not a man, bro. You're not a man. Okay, fine. Man, how, how, come on, come on. Hush, 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 hush. You're not a man, bro. Word, one second, Rob. One second. Only word I want from you to come out is Muhammad is a pedophile. Uh, you left Islam and you're going to convert to Christianity. Okay, if not, I, I, you're not a man enough. If not, you're not a man enough. This recording will be all over TikTok. I got 30 accounts. With each account, 4,000 followers. <laughs> so, yeah, Rob has the same thing. Hush, hush, I'm talking. <laughs> Bro, Ford has the same thing. Rob has the same thing. Revolution has the same thing. We will embarrass the shit out of you on TikTok. Now, say Muhammad is a pedophile. Be a so, man. Okay, how, how, a man. How, how do you convert to Christianity? Be a man. Be a man. Condemn your prophet. Let's go. Bro, I do not want Allah to Rick, me condemn to have your that. prophet. Okay. Be a man. Be a man. Be stand a man. behind your words. Be a man. You said that you're going to leave Islam. I Be a stand man. behind the I stand behind the words of the Quran, bro. <laughs> so you're not a man guys? He said it, he's okay. not man enough. Go. Get the fuck out. We're gonna embarrass the shit out of you on TikTok. Yeah. Okay. You're done, bro. You're done. There you go, brother. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, this was uh, this was a nice little debate, guys. <laughs> it was a nice little debate. And guys, of course, we sh you saw that we used literally the Sunni books against him. Again, book number one, Fathul Munam, Sharh Sahih Muslim. So this is again the explanation, like Fathul Bari, but this is for Sahih Muslim. So uh, Sahih Bukhari has his own exegetes own commentary books, but also Sahih Muslim by this big giant Sunni scholar called Musa Shaheen Lashin, volume five explanation called Fathul Mun'am for the explanation, the Sharh in Arabic. Sharh means explanation, the exegesis, the commentary on Sahih Muslim, right? So in this book, volume five, page 622, as showed in during the debate, during the discussion, here we have a part, the commentary on the Sahih Muslim. We see on page 622 in the bottom that Aisha did suckle a young man. Aisha did suckle a young boy. وَأَرْضَعَتْ غُلَامًا فَعْلًا Aisha indeed did suckle, did breastfeed a young man who entered upon her. So literally Aisha, guys, she was the mother. She became the mother of the breastfeeders. 
Aisha's titties were always out. Emotional, damn it. Any customer? Thank you, RJ, for providing the link again. Any customer? Guys, as you notice, Brother Phil is providing also the references in the chat. So collect all these references, take screenshots, do what you got to do, and use this. Don't allow our teaching to, to go in vain, guys. Always make sure, if you want to do polemics against Islam, make sure to collect all the references, okay? All of them. All right. Rob, do you have the reference for Fath al-Mun'am? Yes, I have. Let me give it to you as well. It's in Arabic, though. Muslims don't dare to translate. It's in Arabic, unfortunately. But let me give it to you anyway. Let me give it to you anyway. Let's see, where did I put that link? Fath al-Mun'am. Fath al-Mun'am. Where are you? Fath al-Mun'am. Here. The download link of... Fath al Munam, volume 5, page 622. Okay, You need to know Arabic, but if you want to have the link anyway, here's the download link of the entire book. Right? Entire book. Look, if you open your browser, you put the link in the browser. Okay? You can download it for free. Look, Fath al Munam. Let me make it a little bit bigger. You see, guys, literally all the books, you can download them for free. It's uh, 263 megabytes big, the entire book. You go down, you can download it for free. Look here, look. Download or even read it for free online. You click on read or download. You go to the correct volume. What volume was it again, Rob? Fath al-Mun'am, let's see. Volume 5. So I have to go to volume 5 and go to page six hundred. 22 all the way down and you go to the correct page you don't you don't even need to download the entire book you can take literally screenshots like i do i love to download the entire book but that's just me because you never know when they will take these free bees <laughs> free web websites you know from the air because they are noticing that we are using it against them right guys so make sure to always collect all of their books and use it against them always in Use polemics, guys, because only polemics helps. Look, page 620. And here, uh, what was it? No, 60, 622, forgive me, 622. Here, look, page 622. And in the bottom, look, guys, we find here literally that وَأَرْضَعَتْ uh, غُلَامًا فَعْلًا Look, وَأَرْضَعَتْ عَائِشَ وَكَانَتْ عَائِشَ رَضِي اللَّهُ عَنْهَا عَنْهَا رَضِي اللَّهُ عَنْهَا وَأَرْضَعَتْ غُلَامًا فَعْلًا She literally breastfed the young man. I gave you the link, guys. Do what you gotta do. Download it, use it, whatever you need to do. So, and I put here this part, this translation for everybody. This is the part, right? وَأَرْضَعَتْ غُلَامًا فَعْلًا She indeed suckled a young man. There you go. That's source number one that we used and also the tafsir for the Quran, tafsir al-tahrir wa tanweer called Right, Tafsir al-Tahrir al-Tanwir by the giant uh, Maliki scholar Ibn Ashur, very famous Maliki scholar. Volume 4, page page 297, Surah An-Nisa. So the explanation, the commentary on Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, ayah 23 of the Quran. وَكَانَتْ عَاشَ أُمَّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ The mother of the breastfeeders, <laughs> the believers. If someone wanted to enter upon her, she used to do... <laughs> Give her breasts to him. And of course, this is Dalek min idhnin nabi. This is by the permission of the perv called Rasulullah, the Prophet of Islam. Salam. May Allah's peace be on Muhammad. May Allah's peace be on Muhammad, forcing his wives to suckle grown up men. Muhammad was a perv, guys. He loved it, right? He loved the idea that his wives specifically Aisha, to breastfeed, to be used as the village bike, right? There you go. There you go. Now, guys, some people might say, Rob, if you're an idiot, I'm going to say it as it is, if you are an idiot, you are ignoramus, like many Muslims, if you're an ignorant guy or a woman, ignorant people might say, Rob, but wait, Rob, 
How could Aisha breastfeed if she never had any children? Anyone would have asked the same question? Be honest. Is there anybody who would say, uh, Rob, how could Aisha breastfeed if she never had any children? Is there anybody? Be honest. Is there anyone here who would have asked the same question? Be honest. It's okay, guys. But I will call you ignorant. It's not an insult. It's okay to be ignorant. How many people here thought or asked the same question? Rob, how could Aisha breastfeed if she never had any children? Well, the answer is very easy. According to science, even virgins can produce milk. Did you know that? Even according to science, scientists will admit that even virgins who never had sex with anyone who are virgins, nobody touched their private parts, even virgins can produce milk according to science. That's number one. And the Muslim scholars also agree. Watch. Let me give you the link. So now you're learning, right, guys? Even virgins can produce milk. They can lactate. Look, someone is asking a question, and this is the fatwa number on Islam q and I gave you the link, right, guys? You can download the link. You can use it, whatever you need to do. Bookmark it or save it. Look, question raised, and this is fatwa number 173,123. Okay, this is the fatwa number, the question number. Taking hormones to stimulate milk production in a woman, will she become a mother through breastfeeding? Thereby, and will her husband become a father? So even if she's a virgin, right? Question. My friend and his wife, someone is raising a question, a Muslim. My friend and his wife have adopted two boys. She's medically unable to produce children. So this is a woman that cannot produce children. Maybe her womb is not allowing her. Uh, you know, she has bad hormones. The eggs are not being fertilized. Whatever. Women can have that issue. I don't wish it, of course, for any woman, but it can happen, right? That a woman is physically not able or medically not able to become pregnant. They understand that the only way these boys can stay with them past the age of puberty is that she breastfed them before the age of two years in order to satisfy the Islamic requirement, breastfeed them baby. So she had herself injected with hormones that produce milk her body and she breastfed them. So by uh, injecting uh, medicines uh, that have hormones, her body will allow her to produce milk. So she become, she can become unlawful for them. She, they cannot lust after her, right? Does artificially injecting hormones to produce milk and the breastfeeding them fulfill the condition in the light of Islam, brother? Brother ya sheikh, brother ya mufti, brother, can you answer please? Are those boys now mahram to her? This will help many other couples who are not adopting just because their wives do not have milk and cannot breastfeed the adopted child. Uh, Habibi, if you claim to be a Muslim and you follow the sunnah, you are not allowed to adopt children. Your prophet annulled adoption. Hello, adoption is not allowed in Islam. Yeah, jahil. But anyway, that's not the topic. So this guy is, uh, who's raising the question, he doesn't understand that you are not allowed to adopt children in Islam. Why? Because Muhammad lusted after his own daughter-in-law, Zainab bint Jahsh, the wife of his adopted son, Zaid ibn Muhammad. Uh -huh. So because Muhammad lusted after his own daughter-in-law, adoption became unlawful. So this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Anyway, what can we do? Muslims don't know their religion. So the answer from the sheikh, look, the answer from the sheikh says, the majority of scholars, guys, the big scholars, the most scholars in Islam think that the woman's milk that has consequences does not necessarily have to result from intercourse. Do you see it? So women, according to the Islamic scholars, women can produce milk even if they are not pregnant or they have never had sex with a man before. Did you catch it? And the resulting pregnancy. So a woman, even if she is, I mean a girl, even if she is a virgin, she can produce milk according to the scholars of Islam. Aha. Uh -huh. Or from birth, giving or from giving birth. Rather, if she takes something to stimulate milk production, then breastfeed a child with that. The inf this infant will become uh, her son through breastfeeding. Did you catch it? Hence, they did not rule it out of a woman who is a virgin who has never been married before before breastfeeds a child. So even virgins 
can produce milk in Islam. And that's also what the scientists, guys, even scientists do agree with that, by the way. Virgins can produce milk. It's scientifically proven. She becomes a mother through breastfeeding. This is the view of Imam Malik. Aha. Uh -huh. Ash-Shafi'i. Aha. Uh -huh. And Abu Hanifa. And was regarded as more correct. So the view of by the Hanbali scholars like Al-Mardawi and Ibn Qudama, the student of uh, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Do you see, guys? The majority of the scholars agree that even virgins, even the scholars of Islam, the scholars of Islam said and all agreed that even virgins, if, let's say, Aisha was a virgin, she wasn't, even Aisha can produce milk. Right? Virgins can produce, they can lactate milk from their titties. Did you catch it? That's the conclusion. Uh -huh. So I had a debate with a donkey about this. Again, a, uh, not a debate. Actually, this guy is a coward. Let me correct myself. He's a coward. He will never dare to debate me. So if, And he said, he raised the same question. So he tried to refute me with the following video. He will never ever dare to debate me because you know what I will do to him in actual debate. I will destroy him. But look what he said during one of his response videos about me. The Muslim idiot, the Muslim village idiot, his name is uh, the Muslim cowboy. He's a, 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 a traitor to the United States, right? A traitor, right? Who converted to Islam. He has no honor. He has no dignity to, you know, and... Uh, he, one of his responsive videos about me, he uh, 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 tried to refute me about, oh, how could Aisha produce milk if she never uh, had any children, right? Look. In this cooking video, you will learn how to cook a Muslim convert and finish his dawah career when he tries to refute you. This coward is too scared to debate me, so like his boyfriend Farid response, he can only do response videos to refute us. Simply because there are no real men left in Islam who dare to step up for an actual debate with an Arabic-speaking Christian like moi. This guy single-handedly finished himself and destroyed his dawah career with the following statement about the suckling business of his mother Ayusha. Watch what he said about my last video regarding Aisha breastfeeding the young man who used to enter upon her. As you see in this video, he's making a claim that Aisha, Umul Mu'minin, the mother of the believers, she would allow any man, grown man, to come and breastfeed from her. Ya munafiqu ya zindiq, I don't make any claims, I only read what your books and scholars said about Aisha's suckling business. If you are too embarrassed about your mother Ayusha and want to reject your books, and scholars who explain Sahih Muslim and the Quran, then that's not my problem. The only response that this video that he did needs is simple, and it's this. It is well known that Ummul Mu'mini Now I focus guys, his supposed refutation coming in, right? His refutation is the following, focus. So this Muslim convert, this idiot, he's a village idiot like his mother, Ayusha, Right, the village bike Aisha, the mother of the breastfeeders, he is embarrassed of her, so he's going to lie about her. It's well known that Ummul Mu'minin Aisha, Allah be pleased with her, never had any children. Therefore, everything in your entire video that you just said is moot because she could never have breastfed because she never produced milk. <laughs> this is really embarrassing, man. This video is the perfect example of how such converts get deceived into this sex cult. They clearly don't study Islam before taking their shahada, yet wholeheartedly try to defend this dangerous cult in their videos. Yahmar ibn Ahmar, do you even know who you're talking to? My name is Rob Christian and I'm your worst nightmare. I really feel embarrassed for this audience. I feel sorry for the Muslims who listen to such ignoramus wannabe Muslims and might even agree with them. And the most dangerous part is that people are getting deceived without investigating if this guy is uh, maybe lying or is speaking without any knowledge. 
it's embarrassing that a Christian like me needs to teach such people what their most trusted scholars said about this topic in Islam. So the question is, is it possible for a virgin, a woman or a girl who did not have sexual intercourse to produce any milk like Aisha? And this automatically will answer the question of anyone who's still confused or might ask, how could Aisha breastfeed any man if she never had any children? We'll give you the answer and teach this ignorant cowboy what his scholars said about this matter. Here is a book that is based on the sayings of Imam Malik. And we know that when Imam Malik was in Medina, no one else dared to issue fatwas except him. This book is called Al Mudawana fi Furu al Malikiya li Imam Sahnoon, volume 2, page 299. To the Arabic speakers among us, هذا الكتاب على قول Imam Malik, who is a jazz fi Hurmat Laban al Bikr, التي لم توطأ ولم تنكح. يعني تخيل يا أخي المسلم. امرأة فتاة لم تنكح بعد عند لبن Translation According to Imam Malik in his book We read that virgins i.e. women or girls Who had no sexual intercourse Can produce milk And breastfeed a man or a child To make him unlawful for her Imagine According to Imam Malik Virgins can produce milk and this is not only according to Imam Malik, but it's also the view of Ash Shafi'i and Abu Hanifa and was regarded as more correct by the Hanbali scholars Al Mardawi and Ibn Qudama. So in Islam, we can safely say virgins or any woman can produce milk according to the most high scholars of Islam even if a woman or a girl never had sexual intercourse with a man before. So in other words, this complements and backs up my statements in my last video. Yes, Aisha did breastfeed the young man who entered upon her as proven in my last debate. And I didn't even mention the fact that in Islam, women can be pregnant for four years or even more than that. But that's off topic for now. I'll provide all the necessary links and references in the description box and in a pinned comment under this video. Stay away from Islam. All right, guys, stay away from Islam, of course. Any human with some dignity, honor, any human who claim to be um, a, 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 a human and not an animal, you should stay away far, far away from Islam. All right, guys? So you see, guys, how we cook these liars and deceivers, these ignoramuses. They don't know their religion, guys. Right? Guys, uh, small break. Small break. I need to do a phone call. Someone keeps buzzing me. Someone keeps calling me. So I need to t take this call. Be right back. Be right back. Don't go anywhere. Pinky promise? Be right back. Don't go anywhere. Be right back. I'll be back. Commercial break. Hello, babies. If you would like to support Rob Christian, please go to Patreon and support www.patreon.com slash Rob Christian. We thank you all for your kindly support and enjoy the video. Oh, and also don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. You know it's free, habibis. Don't be tight like Muhammad. Commercial break. Hello, babies. If you would like to support Rob Christian, please go to Patreon and support. www.patreon.com slash Rob Christian. We thank you all for your kindly support and enjoy the video. Oh, and also don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. You know it's free, habibis. Don't be tight like Muhammad. Commercial break. Hello, babies. If you would like to support Rob Christian, please go to Patreon and support. www.patreon.com 
Ash Rob Christian. We thank you all for your kindly support and enjoy the video. Oh, and also don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You know it's free, Habibis. Don't be tight like Muhammad. Commercial break. Hello, Habibis. If you would like to support Rob Christian, please go to Patreon and support www.patreon.com slash Rob Christian We thank you all for your kindly support and enjoy the video Oh and also don't forget to like, comment and subscribe You know it's free Habibis Don't be tight like Muhammad Commercial break Hello Habibis If you would like to support Rob Christian Please go to Patreon and support www.patreon.com slash Rob Christian We thank you all for your kindly support And enjoy the video Oh and also don't forget to like, comment and subscribe You know it's free Habibis Don't be tight like Muhammad Commercial break Hello Habibis If you would like to support Rob Christian Please go to Patreon And support www.patreon.com Slash Rob Christian We thank you all for your kindly support And enjoy the video Oh and also don't forget to like, comment and subscribe You know it's free Habibis Don't be tight like Muhammad Commercial break. All right, all right, guys. We are back. Sorry for the break. I hope that my sound is loud and clear. We are back, baby. We are back. We are live. All right. Sound check. Sound check. Mic check. Is my sound clear, guys? Give me one, please. All right. Loud and clear. Thank you, brother Phil. So, guys, um, what can I say? I mean... I mean, I mean, Muslim cowboy, you are a fraud. You converted to a religion that you don't know. You claim that you know Islam. You think you can refute me, but I just cooked you, Muslim cowboy. And this guy has more than 100,000 subscribers. I've been destroying Islam left and right for years, and I just been struggling to finally reach 50,000 subscribers. This guy just joined YouTube and he has already more subscribers than me. But what can we expect? Let us be honest. Christians don't support their warriors, unlike the Muslims. Muslims do support their warriors, their Dawah boys. Right? It's, yeah, he has more than 100,000 subscribers. Can you imagine this Muslim cowboy that I destroyed? I've been destroying Islam left and right and I just reached. Again, guys, thank you for your... Uh, uh, for your support anyway thank you guys uh, i don't i'm not, of course i'm not talking about you guys please don't get me wrong i'm talking about the christians who are too lazy to support their warriors 50000 subscribers and and nobody who doesn't know his religion has 100000 subscribers thank you sister dragon deniers god bless you thank you all of you for your support for so many years now thank you so much god bless you god bless your loved ones what is the sad reality, guys? Christians don't care. Specifically the Christians here in the West. They don't care. They don't want to learn uh, about how dangerous and evil this man-made cult of Muhammad Islam is. Right Now, guys, we have also uh, people like Sister Farida. Sister Farida, I know you're listening, Sister Farida. Guys, I went away for five minutes and we dropped 50 viewers is that your trust in in us i said I'll, I'll have to take a phone call and you and 50 people went away wow you see guys well good job good job guys i am away two minutes and we drop 50 viewers thank you so much guys thank you so much for your patience with me brother anyway sister farida <clears throat> 
Sister Farida tried to uh, defend the adult breastfeeding business of his prophet. His prophet forcing women in the 7th century to take out their breasts, including his wives, like Aisha, to take out their breasts and suckle adult men with beards. And the scholars and, and these Dawah boys try to do a lot of damage control to save Islam from dying. Because how, which man, which woman, which woman, which Muslim woman is willing to take out her breasts and suckle strangers who enter upon her? Which woman in Islam would follow the sunnah, the teaching and tradition of her prophet? Because remember, when Muhammad orders something, it becomes automatically sunnah, and you have to follow the sunnah of Muhammad. So here, Sister Farida, who has no honor and he has no dignity, he has no honor, he has no dignity, he's not ashamed, he uh, doesn't care about his mother, he agrees that his mother should take out her titties and breastfeed adult men if they enter upon her. This, this, this girly, this, this snitch, remember he's, he's, he's known as a snitch, right? He will leak the emails about Yasser Qadi, right? He's the snitch who read, read the emails about Yasser Qadi, the holes in the standard narrative. This is the guy, right, guys? Sister Farida tried to save Islam. And he said on Twitter, look, I took a screenshot. He said, as for Albani's position on the matter, he clearly affirms that it's a sin, except in a case in which her situation makes it a necessity. So if it's a necessity to take out your breast and breastfeed, it should happen. So he agrees with it. Of course, he's going to agree with the son of his filthy prof, perv, uh, uh, fake fraud prophet, right? He mentions that drinking the milk from a cup is sufficient to create a foster relationship. So what he's saying is the damage control is the woman should take out her breast and inside a cup, not put the nipple directly in the mouth of a grown-up man with a beard, so pour the milk from the titties inside a cup or a pot, and then the man drinks on five different days. So that's basically the damage control of nowadays Muslims, right guys? Pour the breast milk, pour the breast milk <laughs> of the woman, pour the breast milk uh, of the woman, the Muslim woman inside a cup, and then give the cup, right? And then give the cup to a man to drink on five different days. So don't put the nipple in your mouth, brother. So if Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab meet, Muhammad Hijab, according to Farid, he should not put the nipples of the wife of Ali Dawa inside his mouth and on five different days. Yes, brother. Put it in the milk cup, brother. Milk cup, right? Basically, women in Islam are milk cows, right? Women in Islam are become milk cows. That's what Muslim women are in Islam. They are milk cows. Just put milk inside a cup and drink it, brother. But wait. Wait! Emotional, damn it! Wait! Farid, I will not allow you to get away with the murder, you filthy scumbag, you liar, because you are using a rejected hadith. Guys, Muslims refer to this hadith that was made famous by Ibn Hajar, the Munafiq, the Zindiq himself, Ibn Hajar, who literally made the hadith famous that we can find in Ibn Sa'd's Tabaqat al-Kubra, volume 8, page 271. This hadith, guys, that you see it on the screen, in the middle, is a rejected hadith. Why? Because the narrator of this hadith, the narrator of this hadith is Al-Waqidi, but Al-Waqidi is a known liar, a hadith fabricator. All of his hadith are rejected. So whenever you see Al-Waqidi in hadith, specifically about rulings, haram, halal, you have to reject it. So why do they use rejected hadith? Yet when we Christians use a da'if hadith, they say uh, it's da'if. But you see how Muslims use even rejected hadith. This is not even da'if. This hadith is not even Da'if, because Da'if hadith are fully accepted, right guys? It's not even Da'if. It is a rejected hadith. It's worse than that. Did you catch it? Totally rejected hadith. It's a rejected hadith. Exactly, Phil. Rejected. You cannot use rejected hadith. You can use Da'if hadith, uh, though, 
but not rejected hadith. So they are using, so Fifi, Sister Fifi is using a rejected hadith. Doesn't work. And look guys, the chain of narration for the milk in the cup in, that we can find in Ibn Sa'ad, Tabaqat al-Kubra, is from Al-Waqidi. And Al-Waqidi, who is in the chain, the main narrator in the chain, he is a known fabricator. And look what the scholars have said about him. Imam al-Shafi'i, number one. Look, famous scholars. All of Al-Waqidi's books are lies. Number two, scholar number two, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, the Ahmad ibn Hanbal said, Al-Waqidi is a liar. And Nasai, who is responsible for Sunan al Nasai, that guy, Imam al Nasai, Al Waqidi is a liar who fabricates hadith. Ha uh ha. -huh. So, why you Muslims use his rejected hadith to prove, uh, to try to sugarcoat Islam, you filthy scumbags? Ah uh ha. -huh. Because you are deceivers like your Allah, who claim to be the best of deceivers. Yes, Allah is a deceiver. Of course, Muslims will use the same deception to protect Islam from dying. Aywa, aywa, aywa. Yahya bin Mu'ayn said Al Waqidi is weak. He is nothing, not reliable. Uh, what about Imam al Bukhari? Imam al Bukhari said, and I quote Al Waqidi has been abandoned in hadith. He fabricates hadith. Thank you, Imam Bukhari. Thank you, thank you. What about Abu Daud, who is responsible for Sunan Abi Daud? That guy. He said, and I quote I have no doubt that Al Waqidi. Al Waqidi fabricates hadith. And D. Ibn Hajar, the filthy scumbag who made that hadith famous, he said, Al Waqidi has been abandoned in hadith. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Ibn Hajar, yes, brother, Rob, Christian brother, why you made this hadith famous then, you filthy scumbag? Well, because I'm a liar and a deceiver like my Allah, the emotional damage. Uh huh. Uh huh. So in the end, guys, the scholars are not better than any Muslim of today who need to sugarcoat and lie about Islam and try to protect Islam from dying. Because how can you believe this? How can you accept this that your mother, your sister and daughter will take out her breast and suckle grown up men? Is your mommy, is your mommy a milk cow? Got milk? Is your wife a milk cow? Huh? Is your mother like Aisha? Who used to take out her breast? Say ah. Uh, say ah. Uh, is this Islam? Yes, brother. Right? Congratulations, guys. Congratulations with this filth that you call a religion. Congratulations. Congratulations, brother. Congratulations. If you have any honor, you have any dignity, leave Islam, man. How is Islam a religion? How is Muhammad the best example to follow? Muhammad literally used to order women to breastfeed, take out their breasts and give it to adult men. Honest to God, if I would have been a Muslim, I would go every day and visit a woman. You know, maybe if I'm, if I'm a Muslim cable guy, if I would be, if I would have been a cable guy, you know, someone who fixes the cable at your house, all right? I would go and visit any Muslim woman to breastfeed. Right, guys? <laughs> Rob, you take it easy, Rob. Emotional damage. Right? Uh, the cable guy, uh, wifey, mama, mama, uh, mommy. Uh, we have the cable guy. He's a Muslim. He has a big beard, but you need to suckle him, though. He must come on five different days. Remember, it used to be 10 days, but it got abrogated to five different days. So come and suckle him, mom. Uh, wife, take out your breast. Do you have some milk today? Got milk? The milkman. <laughs> Unbelievable, this religion, man. What is this religion, man? What is this religion? What is this religion? Guys, there are books... There are books, okay? There are books. There are many books, guys, that explain the following. You see it already on the screen. But let me uh, put the uh, the cover of the book. Here is the cover of the book, that I, of the page that I'm showing. Just a second. The cover of the book. al fatawa al-Shari'iyya. This is a book for Sharia. Fi al-Masail al 
Tabiya. So this is a, a fatwa, fatwa book, right? A fatwa book in front of you for uh, medical medical uh, questions. Tabiya means medical, right? But it's based on Sharia of Islam, right? Sharia of Allah, the law of Allah, the sacred law of Allah on earth, right? So fatwa, rulings of Sharia of Islam for questions about medical stuff. Volume two, right? Volume two, a jiz, a thani. Volume two. Uh, uh, there is a question. A question number hundred and ninety-nine. Sual. Question. Question number one ninety-nine. You see it on the screen, right, guys? Question one ninety-nine in this book. Someone is asking, "What should I do? What should I do?" And the jawab, the jawab, the answer. You see it already. Breastfeeding mahram is five suckling or more and it's holding and sucking the nipple so guys in other words muslims muslims scholars they do admit scholars do admit that you have to grab the nipple and put it in your mouth do you see it so this lie milk inside a cup it's a lie they know it's it's a fabricated hadith it's nothing but sugar coating islam always needs fixing with lies But among themselves, they do admit that you have to put the nipple of the woman inside your mouth. Okay, lips to tits only, exactly, brother, and specifically nipples. The nipple of the wife or the mother, the nipple of the woman, Muslim woman, must be put in the mouth and drink on five or more days. <laughs> it used to be ten, but it got abrogated according to Aisha to five. Right? Remember the hadith. About the goat coming in and eating the Quran of Aisha, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. The nipple must be hold with the hands of the man with the beard and on the nipple, brother. I challenge any Muslim to say, "Rob, you're lying, Rob. Rob, you're lying, Rob. Come at me. The the phone lines are open, man. Call us. Let's see if you have what it takes." Don't be afraid. Right? No, Steve, no. You must be satisfied on five different days. It used to be 10. It used to be 10 days. And it got abrogated to five days. So both, you must fill your belly with milk from the titties. Right? It used to be 10 days and it got abrogated to five different days. Not to have a days, no. Five different days. Five different occasions. Aywa, aywa. Emotional damage. You see, guys, if you read the books, how everything gets exposed, do some little research and you'll get it. So, guys, what do you think about today's topic? I hope you benefited. I hope you learned something new today. I hope you learned something new today. And see how evil Islam is. Do you have any calls? Any Muslim? Is there any Muslim who would dare to call in? Any Muslim? Is there any Muslim who can defend his religion? Are you, uh, no Muslim? No Muslim who would dare to call in and defend his religion? I mean, I'm a Kafir. You call us Kufar. And you Muslims call us liars. Our videos are going everywhere. Our videos are reaching all the corners of this planet. And you Muslims are not doing anything about it. Didn't Allah in chapter 47, I7 says, you have to help. If you help Allah, Allah will help you. Muslims, please help Allah, man. Allah needs help. We are destroying Allah's religion. Allah needs help. Yalla ya Muslimun. Chapter 47, ayah 7. False translation, by the way. What else is new? What else is new? Where are the more honest translations? Here, I think this one is good. Yeah, look. If, oh, you believe, oh, Muslims, Allah said in chapter called Muhammad, chapter 47, ayah 7, oh, believers, oh, you believe, ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, in tansurullah, Allah yansurukum. If you help Allah, Allah will help you. Everything between the brackets is a lie, by the way. So if you if you believe, 
all who you believe, Muslims, if you help Allah, Allah will help you. But Allah needs help first. Allah needs help. Muslims, help Allah, man. Rob is destroying Allah's religion. Come on. Mulhad uh, al-Islam, Habibi, take it easy with your trolling if you don't mind. Okay. I love you, bro. I'm happy that you're here, but easy, guys, please. I can't handle too much trolling and uh, spam if you if you don't mind. I know you are a mulhid. I know that you're an apostate from Islam, but because you are honest, you are you you do have dignity. I'm happy for you that you left Islam, brother. But take, please, I love you, bro. But take it easy if you don't mind. And uh, go easy with the caps lock, brothers and sisters. You don't need to scream in my face, Rob. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Tony King is right. It's a, it's a huge insult, Luis. Luis, like brother Tony King said, it's an insult. It's pure blasphemy to call Allah the God of the Bible. You are blaspheming the true God of the Holy Bible by, by calling Allah God of the Bible. Don't do it. It's on you. You're the one who's sinning, not me. Help Allah, man. Allah needs help. Muslims, Allah needs your help. Come on. You need to help Allah first. Then Allah might decide to help you. Yalla, ya khwan. The lines are open. You can literally call life on air and defend your religion. Yalla. Not one Muslim dares to call in, man. The phone lines are empty. Any Muslim? Yalla, show fair, yalla. Yalla, show fair. What is this religion that makes its followers a bunch of cowards who do not dare to debate Arabic-speaking Christians? Muslims have lost their honor. They have lost their dignity and manhood. Right? This religion is created by a man, for men, not for women, for men. But these men are nothing but cuckolds. They are not true men. They all have become little girly girls. They are not more men than their mother Aisha. Aisha was a bigger man than any Muslim man in 2024. Right? At least she was the bike of the village. Everybody could enter upon her, breastfeed from her, see how she's washing her body naked, right? see her titties, suckle from her titties, have wet dreams in her inside her tiny little house here. This is the tiny little house. Look how tiny it was, guys. Men come in, men go out. Men come in, men come out. Tiny little bedroom. All right? Aisha's house was a cheap motel, man. Aisha's house was a cheap motel. Yes. Very cheap. Cheap, very cheap motel, brother. The house of Aisha was a cheap motel. Any Muslim? Or do you fully agree with me, Muslims? Be honest. The bike village, yes, Aisha was the bike village, guys. Not kidding. Aisha became the vi uh, bike village. Everybody could use her and abuse her. Made possible by Rasulullah, by the way. Full moon in, yeah. <laughs> busy schedule of Aisha. Of course, she was very busy, guys. If I would have been uh, alive in, to, in, in, in the 7th century, right? Born after the death of Muhammad, let's say, or, or Muhammad has already passed away, I would stay in the front rows every day, day in, day out, to suckle from uh, my mother, Ayusha. Got milk for today, Aisha, no, come back tomorrow. I'm out of milk. <laughs> Unbelievable. The mother of the breastfeeders. The mother of the breastfeeders. Any Muslim? Yalla, ya khwan. Yalla, yalla, yalla. Yalla, ya shabab. Yalla, yalla, yalla. Yalla, ya shabab. That, where's that house? Supposedly it's in uh, in Medina, right? Aisha lived in Medina. 
the men, the young boys, the adult men of Medina used to enter upon her and even had wet dreams. They used to wash her body naked. Right? She used to teach them how to wash her their bodies. She became an expert on semen washing. Aisha became an expert. Okay? She was an expert. Go to Aisha to learn how to wash your dinghy dinghy between your legs. Right? Mama, yes, uh, I'm Aisha, brother. What's what's wrong, uh, brother? Mama, my mother of the breastfeed is mama. Uh, can you tell me, uh, can you show me how to wash your body? Mama, yes, sure. Let me take off my clothes. Let me expose my titties for you, brother. But mama, it's okay, it's okay. You can watch. Any Muslim? Any Muslim who dares to say Rob Christian, you're lying? Or do you Muslims today agree, be honest? Since we don't have any Muslim callers, that means all of them agree. At least they do agree, though. Yeah, and what you see on the screen, guys, again, what you see on the, on the screen is the explanation, the commentary on the hadith that Brother Phil just provided on the screen. Look, in the chat, you can collect all of these hadith. What you see here is the commentary of called Fath al-Bari, the commentary book. Multi-volume commentary by by Ibn Hajar called Fath al-Bari fi Sharh uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 1, page 620. Right. Any Muslim? Yeah, Muslims uh, while watching RC, you're making stuff up. It doesn't say that. Yeah. Be a nice little coward and keep thinking that. Unfortunately, these are your books. Look. Fath al-Bari. Literally the book, you can download it for free. Fath al-Bari, volume one by Ibn Hajar. Rob, can you give us the link again? Sure. It's in Arabic though. Like I said, it's only in Arabic. But let me give you the link anyway. Here is the link of this book that you see on the screen. For free. Use it and abuse it. <laughs> Here is the link again. Look. Download it for free. Go to page 620. Here is the hadith of Sayyid al-Bukhari on top. The explanation is always on the bottom. All the way down. And we can see, according to Qala al-Qadi Ayyad, right, he said that they, the boys, the young boys, they saw the action of Aisha washing her body and specifically saw her naked upper body. Ali Jasadaha, meaning her naked upper body. She exposed literally from the belly button and up. So you could see her be belly, right? You could see her, her tummy, belly. You can see her hair. You can see her breasts. So they literally saw her breasts. Aisha's breasts were always free. For everybody to see and, and and lick on. Man, what is this religion, man? What is this religion, man? No, no, she enjoyed it. Uh, Pi friends, she became a Betty. Aisha enjoyed it, right? She enjoyed. She became a Betty. We know she, uh, you know, she got damaged. By Muhammad, physically and mentally, but she in the in the end she enjoyed it. Do you remember the hadith guys that used to say that Aisha used to go on the streets and take her slave girls with her? The mother of the breasts. <laughs> she used to go on the streets and take her slave girls with her and hunt for boys and men. Hunting for men, exactly. Hunting for men. She became a madam. She became a pimp. Aisha was a pimp, guys. She was a madam. Right? Hunting. Hunting the boys. Do we have any boys? Any boys for tonight? Mom. Mom, do we have any boys for tonight? Yes, for sure. Let us hunt on the streets. Any, any Muslim men? Any man? 
Any manly man? More more man than his mother Aisha? I dare you to call in live on air. Come on, call us. The phone lines are open. Are there any uh, questions in the chat, guys, that we can answer? I don't like to uh, have Christians on the phone line if you don't if you don't mind, guys, please. Only Muslims. Are there any questions in the chat that we can answer? If you still have some questions left after the destruction that we call a last stream of today. It's a weak hadith. Yeah, everything is weak. That embarrasses Islam becomes automatically weak. But they will use weak hadith though. They even use rejected hadith, remember? This hadith is rejected, totally rejected. Not even weak. It's weak. No, it's not weak. It's rejected, right? The narrator is al-waqidi. The milk inside the cup, right? It's rejected. Get over here. <laughs> Any Muslim? Get over here and protect your mother, Ayusha. Ayusha Dausha. Ayusha Dausha. Um al Gamal, Um al Gamal. It's a joke. Of course, Alika, it's a joke. She's a bad girl. Aisha is a bad girl. Uh, a board, uh, I don't care what you have to say, but it only works with the Muslims. That's the only way that it works with Muslims. Muslims don't accept anything. They don't care about your Bible. Muslims don't care about your Bible. If you want to go and preach the Bible to Muslims, go ahead. You'll waste four hours with a Muslim talking about the Bible, talking about the Bible. In the end, he will say, I don't accept your Bible. The Bible is corrupted. You need to give them the taste of their own medicine. <laughs> you know, I see it. I, I find it really funny that there are people out there who think that they can teach us how to debate Muslims. You have been living under a stone, buddy. You have been living under a stone. You being humble, you being nice with the Muslims and Islam, it doesn't work. If we read the Islamic books and you think that the Islamic books are nasty, that doesn't make us nasty. I'm, I've been only reading. Guys. If reading is uh, haram, if reading Islamic books it means haram, then Islam is haram. Because everything that I'm showing is directly from the Islamic books. You don't like it? Please. Nobody forces the sword of Muhammad on your neck to stay here and watch my live streams. Just go. Just go. Uh, bored. You know what? Let me, do, let, let me help you out of your mystery. You're a bored person. Yeah. Let me ha help you out of of your of your misery, go 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 yellow yellow go go yellow go go be bored somewhere else, dude. Maybe my uh, my channel is not for everybody, and I don't care about numbers, guys. Yeah, he needs rest from being online, exactly. Any Muslim? Any Muslim?
Is there any Muslim? Any Muslim? Guys, did you know that Aisha used to buy uh, slave girls? Did you know that? Did you know that Aisha used to buy slaves? Not only Muhammad. <laughs> Aisha used to buy slaves? Oh, yes, of course. What kind of mother of the believers buys slaves for herself? Any Muslim? <laughs> Any Muslim? Uh, this reminds me uh, what happened a couple years ago uh, in Germany, if I'm not mistaken. I once read a news article. Muslim men coming from Syria, from Morocco, etc. And uh, during uh, the celebration of the New Year, right, old New Year, they started to, you know, touch women on the streets of Germany, touching the women in their private parts, they think uh, that you know when you come here to the to the west you can literally uh, grab women yeah any muslim Aisha was a hunter for boys, yeah. Guys, are we out of Muslims in 2024? I... Germany 2016, yeah, 2016, it happened in Germany, yeah. Okay, thank you for the update. Syrian Im immigrants, yes. Because they have no honor, they have no dignity, they think they can touch somebody else's daughters, right? Scared of me? Why? Am I that scary? I, think I do have big teeth, though. Even if I smile, my teeth are always exposed. You're the big bad wolf, brother Rob. Ah, I see. Yeah, sometimes even if I look in the mirror, I get scared of myself, specifically in the morning. You don't want to see me in the morning, guys. Yeah. Imagine uh, thinking, if I should I call Rob Christian? Even if I say no to a question... Even if I would say yes, he will use it against me. So be careful around Rob Christian, man. You know, everything that you will say will be used against you in the court of law. <laughs> uh, 
please St. Louis Habibi uh, God bless you brother please don't thank me please please yeah I don't know Marcos I don't know <laughs> maybe I don't know uh story of my life any muslim anyway guys i think we don't have any muslim today they all agree with me guys clearly they all agree with me this is why they don't dare to call in while they are all watching they have been watching so i want to thank everybody i want to thank everybody for their support all the people in the chat the admins the subscribers the viewers thank you for being here I think we did a lot of damage today. Glory to Jesus Christ. Like always, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. He is the God, the God, the living God. Not Allah. Allah is a fake sex maniac like his prophet. Allah is Satan and Muhammad is the prophet of Satan. A pervert who used to force his baby bride Aisha to take out her breasts and suckle he used to force married women like the wife of Abu Hudayfa Sahla bin Suhail to take out her breasts and suckle a grown up man with a beard what kind of prophet is this man muslims please wake up i do not hate you my dear brothers and sisters in humanity muslims We do not hate you, but we do hate your man-made evil cult and your false prophet Muhammad. Please wake up. I love you, everybody. I love you. Go with the peace of the living God himself, Jesus Christ. May he bless you, your loved ones and families. Please accept the truth and denounce falsehoods because Islam is false. Wake up. I love you. See you very soon in a new live show or video. God bless you. Bye bye. God bless. Backup channel, please subscribe. Did you subscribe, guys? <laughs>